Subway has teamed up with Live Nation to bring you great food and great music for a great value. Right now, buy a Subway $5 footlong and get a Live Nation concert ticket for $5 to participate in Live Nation shows like Nickelback, The Fray, and Crew Fest 2. Ticket price does not include fees. See store for details. Subway, eat fresh. Eat, eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Yeah. All right, welcome to the BS Report. I was the first one who wrote that the release of Madden should be a national holiday, and then they hijacked it for a commercial campaign and did not pay me royalties. I'm still a little bit bitter. On the bright side, they did mail me and my buddy Gus who, in my opinion, is the czar of video games. If Dave Jacoby is the czar of reality TV, then, then uh, my buddy Gus is the czar of video games. They mailed us early copies of Madden, and I think it, they did it out of guilt because they stole my holiday idea. Gus has been playing ever since. Now we're calling him for the review. Gus, what's happening? Hey, Bill, how are you? How you feeling? Well, I don't know if I'm going to be the czar of something. I guess that's not a bad title. The, the czar of sports video games, maybe? Yeah, yeah it's not a bad title. I guess it's either that or the Czar of Cooperstown, because you're the only person I know that goes there every year. That's a, I'd probably take that one over the Czar now that I'm 42. 20 years ago, I think I would have taken the video game title. But. but that's what makes it so great, is that you're 42, and you're still religiously playing video games. I think we're all envious of you. In fact, they mailed me the Madden copy, and I barely had a chance to put it in over these last two days, because uh, my wife just frowns upon it. i got to be honest. Not happy about it if there's kids around that I could potentially be watching. Yeah, your your video game play has probably declined eighty percent in the last ten years. Yeah, well here's the difference. You you can you don't really need sleep. You're like Bob Iger. <laughs> Bob Iger needs like three hours a day and he's good. I wish I was like Bob Iger. Well you you can play video games until three thirty in the morning. I'm falling asleep. I fell asleep during the Comedy Central roast on Sunday night. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, there's it's just it's all about finding the window. Steve Berthium and I talk about it all the time. It's just yeah. you, you know, my window is generally I get home from work at twelve thirty at night. There's the only two hours of the day when I'm pretty much all by myself. But I will say that there more recently or not, like when I'm playing N L B O nine and I'm standing in the batter's box and I nod off and I look up and all of a sudden the count's three and two and like, Oh, wait, <laughs> <laughs> you nod off during video games? Yeah, absolutely. That's phenomenal. I guarantee nobody else. Say, see, you are the czar of sports video games. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you that title. All right. So hey, once I get the Madden up and going and we can start playing online and all that, that's going to be fun. Although, you you know, hey, you tell America that at least once upon a time I was really good at video games. Now I think I've slept. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I was be, right up there. I was in the, in the short be, list. You used to be... Tiger Woods, and now you're Tommy Armour the third. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, uh, who's even worse than that? Who's a current guy? Oh. Who's a guy who had a, t- a taste of the glory and is now just out there hacking it? John Daly? I think John, I'm John Daly, Daly. or uh, yeah, he's not a bad one. When's the last time anybody heard from Davis Love? Although he's probably still pretty good, he just doesn't. I haven't seen him on a leaderboard in a while. I don't want to be compared to Davis Love in anything. All right. The most boring athlete of this decade. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, I have Madden and I have PGA t- the Tiger 2010 and, and I have not really played either. But fortunately, you have played the football game, so let's talk about it. Okay. Um, biggest new feature this season. Biggest new feature is probably the on- online franchise league play. This what is, is that? This is something had this been available when we were in college, we would have not completed college. <laughs> Well, we would have been there for seven years. Um, oh, oh, let me excuse you for one second. There's about ten things that qualify for that statement. <laughs> right. Because if they had the Internet in college, I would have been done. Yeah. Um, I would have been kicked out because I would have done some, some sort of website that would have gotten me kicked out. Right. Um, We're just adding this to the list of things that fall yeah. into that category. But online franchise leagues are <laughs> – you can basically have an entire league of your, you and your friends. Everybody claims a team when you play – Online against each other in franchise mode. So you That's, need thirty-two friends. 
you, you, uh, my guess is you can have up to, obviously you can fill out an entire league. I'm, I'm assuming you can probably do it with 6, 10, 12 if you, know, if you right. want to, um, and the computer just plays the rest. <laughs> I did hear, and I don't know this for a fact, but someone said that in the online franchise league play, there's no free agency after each season, which would be a problem. What? But How could there be a franchise season then? I don't know. And I don't know that for a fact, but that's just what someone said they heard. The other kind of subtle change was the, the game plays slower in that the players just don't super fly around the field anymore. It's a little more like realistic. Every player seems just to have slowed down a smidge. Oh, you're saying not in franchise, in general play. In general, in general play, you know, last year and up until this year, I think, all the, the the really fast players seem to just fly on the field, and now everybody seems to be a little bit slowed down, like they're all off the juice or something. So you're saying it's a more realistic yeah. kind of speed versus in the old days when you could just fly down the sidelines like you right. were shot out of hell. Um, there are only two teams that overall rating is in the 90s. The Steelers are a 92 and the, and the Pats are a 93. No other team's overall team rating is in the 90s, which if you went back and looked through the years, I bet there used to be four or five every year. The Pats, 93. Yeah, that's they're before, the highest overall team rating. That's before uh, before you make the trade for Derek Burgess. Right. Got to add him. That might bump it to a 94. That upgrades you. Um, See, that'll be the first thing I do because um, I will be playing Madden 2010 this year. I have the uh, – here's how I think I could pull it off. I, you know, we have the treadmill in front of the TV, and I got to get in shape for my book tour. So my wife thinks. I mean, I want to get in shape for sure. being on TV and stuff. So playing Madden on the treadmill. Well, yeah, using hitting the sticks, that's good for the dexterity, which is good for your fingers, which when you have to sign all those autographs. Yeah, I want. I need to build up my wrist and hand strength, yep. and I need to get in shape so when I go on TV, I'll not look chubby and old. Um, let's see some other cool stuff. There's now a uh, a fight for the fumble element. What's that? Where on some fumbles, the ball's on the field, and then it'll say on the bottom of the screen, press the circle button repeatedly, then it changes to the triangle or the square, and you have to press those buttons really fast like you're under the, like you're in the pile fighting for the ball. And how quickly you're able to push those buttons determines whether or not you get the ball or not. Oh, no. I hate stuff, but I'm bad at that stuff. Yeah, you're but, good at that stuff, though. Yeah, a little slowing down to my old age. Mm. Um, there are... There's some new animations. You get a lot more, like, ISOs on the ball carrier and the tackler as the tackle is happening. You know, kind of, once the, basically the tackle's wrapped up, but they're still falling to the ground, you always kind of get a tight camera shot on those guys. Um, there are a lot of times, like, the, as the quarterback is getting hit and he throws the ball, instead of getting off a good pass, the ball kind of pops up in the air and you get a couple of those, oh, is the lineman going to grab it kind of moments. Oh, the flutter. Yeah, the flutter. And actually you get, uh, if you complete a pass, throwing a duck, you get a little little trophy popped up for me today when Kyle Orton, believe it or not, threw a duck. And it said, like, you know, complete a duck. There are all these little trophies. That you can, like, I played the – I picked off Tom Brady and got and got, a, got a, a trophy for intercepting him. <laughs> you um, just mentioned how Kyle Orton threw a duck, and I was like, that's weird. Why would Gus be playing the Bears when he loves the Broncos? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, Kyle Orton's your quarterback now. Yeah, I, this, yeah. this is the least – Excited I've been about a Madden game probably ever because because you you went from Jay Cutler to Kyle Orton yeah well for for lots of reasons starting with that but like I go to play an exhibition game against the Raiders it yeah. says Raiders overall rating seventy Broncos overall rating seventy one <laughs> oh no that is just a stomach punch of the worst kind and that's before video Brandon Marshall gets into a video domestic violence incident gets suspended from your fake team. right so plus I'm now I have to learn the three four defense and I have to lose learn Josh McDaniel's offense it's like this whole new where's Cutler where's Shanahan where's my you know all, I've had pretty much greatness for the last 15 years minus like the Brian Greasy years and well the Broncos have always overachieved in Madden compared to what their actual talent was with the Terrell yeah. Davis era aside but like this decade especially yeah it was like the team was always better, and you always were getting these weird ratings with guys that didn't deserve the ratings. And I don't know, it was this is, mad. A, this is a cold bucket of water dumped on my Madden head. Well, why can't, well, let me ask you, why can't you just trade for Jay Cutler? What rule is in place that prevents you from doing that? The rule I, I say none. The, the rule that says when when your ex quarterback goes on radio and says that your fans aren't nearly as good as his new team's fans. 
Yeah, that was then, tough. Then I don't want to play with that guy anymore. You know what? I'm looking forward to playing playing against him and trying to break his leg, which leads me to probably the thing you're going to like the most. Oh, Brett, leg breaking's back? Not, <laughs> not quite. But uh, I was playing the Browns today, game two is in season mode. A guy for the Browns is running down the sideline. One defensive back pushes him out of bounds. My other defensive back like hits him five yards out of bounds, and the flag flies. The late hit penalty is back in Madden. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So you can actually... Unnecessary roughness. So that means I can take shots at the quarterback. I'm guessing, yeah. Thank God. It's been such a long odyssey to get us back to that point. You know, we've talked about this before, I'm pretty sure, but you know, in the mid-90s, this led to actual fights. With, between guys who were playing because you could cheap shot the other guy's quarterback and really knock him out of the game. Yeah. It became this thing like it was understood that you didn't do it, but if somebody did it, it really got, would get ugly. With all the memory that they have on the, on, available to them now, they, you should almost have like two kind of modes of the game. So if you want to play a realistic, this is football mode, fine. But if you want to go back to you can crush the quarterback after the play and the ambulance drives on the field mode and play it like a video game, that should be available to you too. We have made that argument, and I cannot think of a good counter why that can't be the case. It should be, if you can turn on, if you can change the lengths of the quarters, yep. and you can do, you know, adjust all the artificial you intelligence can, you can for penalties. Create, you can create a team and put a stadium in, in Greenwich, Connecticut, and boot the Jets out of the AFC East and put in the Greenwich Tigers if you want to. Can you do that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I tell you, that might rejuvenate the Greenwich economy. I don't know where they put the put the stadium though. It'd be tough. Well, you <laughs> they, clear they... some, down at the bottom of Greenwich Avenue on the right and clear out that park. <laughs> you know they're always retooling Greenwich Avenue. Uh, right. Let me run through some quick other stuff that's that's in there that's cool. Um, yeah. Late in the first half, uh, only like three seconds to go. The computer had to kick off, and they did the squid kick instead of kicking it deep. That's a new one. Yep. I like that one. Um, offenses have the wildcat offense available to them now. Ooh, the Wildcat. Um, kind of amazing that that wasn't available before this season. Kind of shows you the, the Miami innovation. There. Yeah. Um, faster fatigue for players. Guys are getting much, you know, you could go like a whole drive without guys basically getting tired. Now if a guy's not a good a good stamina guy, he'll get red and much more quickly. So like fat defensive linemen? And offensive linemen or bad receivers who aren't in great shape or whatever. Or like um, if you have Lindell White, you can't rush him eight times in a row? No. He's going to have to come out? Right. Does the computer take the guy out, or do you have to? Depends on what you set it for. If you set it for, you know, 80%, whatever, then he'll come out when he gets below that level. Oh. Um, there are pregame flyovers, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Players look up and, like, five planes fly overhead. The running, you know, the running has always not been good. It's yeah. always been very robotic. This year, it's probably the best it's ever been for starters as – Again, Steve Bertham says, they're, they, do they look like their feet are actually touching the ground? This year, their feet look like they're touching the ground. But it's funny, like in, in good baseball games, it's, everything is really fluid. When guys are running the bases, they're going after the ball, it just looks real. For whatever reason, football, I don't know what it is about that, but it's, still, it's, it's better, but it's still not great. Hmm. You know, by 2010, you'd like to think that the running would look like running. But Well, you love the realism in the baseball game. Yeah, yeah. That's that's probably the most realistic sports game I've played to date. Although, well, it would seem that if they have the real, if they can do the realism in baseball, they should be able to do it for football. It's not the same company. Oh. Ooh. Um, what else? The Weather Channel sponsors weather reports before the games, uh, which was new last year, and, and this year Snickers is, is involved in the game. And so, like when it's time for the for the coin toss, it says choose C H E W S wisely. And then mm. before the game, it says prepare for the competition. So because this is right up my alley, I immediately thought, well, that means like Adam Venetari would be the play snicker. <laughs> so I, I thought of you during the John Lester on Sunday night when the uh, I was wondering if they were going to cut to his brother in the stands, Mo. You're the <laughs> only one who would have laughed at that joke. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah, that's right. Um, I played the Bengals, and they, they've added a few new animations this year. Like, you get the cutaway of, of the quarterback talking on the phone to someone upstairs. And uh. Carson Palmer um, looks like, in I think it's Shrek the Third, when Shrek turns human. Yeah. Carson Palmer looked just like that guy. And Josh McDaniels looks just like the dad in Stand By Me. <laughs> Dan Lord, oh, no. Uh... Who went on to be another guy in lots of other movies, too. 
The dad on standby me. Which dad? The only dad. That Richard Dreyfus. No, 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 sorry. The 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 dad of when they're when they're when they're young and he, he like at the grave he's like oh well, he, okay he dreams his dad tells him that yeah yeah been you gotcha yeah that guy he went on okay. to play he was I think he was in the Matrix you know that movie has taken on a whole new type of identity ever since Kiefer Sutherland became Jack Bauer stand by me yeah yeah because when he that when now when he confronts the kids at the creek and he's got the bleach blonde hair he's like kind of in it's basically like young Jack Bauer yeah. It's like, what? oh my God, Jack Bauer's gone off the deep end. Well, he also says that like this isn't over, and he hasn't forgotten about he's like, going to get him eventually. So maybe that could be like an episode of episode of Twenty Four, where, where thirty years later he tracks down Will Wheaton and a flashback. Did he scream, "Where's the dead body?" and exclamation <laughs> point? Where's the dead body? Where's the dead body? All right, keep going. Um, and I think most of the, their other improvements are really just for for online play. You know, that's really such a big deal now. You mean that, like the immediacy and and how how quickly you're controlling versus how it's actually happening? Yeah, or? it's just I think most of their attention has been given toward making people who play online happy, like having these these the online franchise leagues and 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 things like that. I think it's just I think few very few people are like you and I might be where we're just going to play franchise mode ninety percent of the time. Although I did play a lot of online last year. What was but, the longest? What's the longest you went? Like 2018? Didn't you get to 2018? All once? in franchise mode. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, I probably played like the duration of Terrell Davis's career to see how it really should have turned out. <laughs> yeah, I remember you going like 15 years. But, one year. You know what's funny is there was a stretch where like pre Cutler still um, uh, Jake the Snake because Plummer was like at 32 or 33. So you, I would get him to for about three more, four more years, and then he retires, and then I have to dip into the free agent pool, and invariably Chris Sims was always the guy who ended up being my quarterback. Yeah. And now here he is. Yeah, I um, remember it was weird for me that when I kept adding Corey Dillon and Randy Moss and Tim Dwight to the Patriots, and then all of them randomly actually ended up on the team. Yeah. I never got over that. It's always weird when you've targeted guys as favorite Madden guys, but then they end up on your real team, It's and it never plays out the way you want it to. Now I think they had this last year, but it seems like it's a little be- a little better this year. Maybe they did nothing, and they'll listen to this podcast and say I'm an idiot. But um, for a while there, the little juke was gone, and this was another big Berthium rant with the college football game that you can only if you did a juke move, it always had to be like the exaggerated move. Um, but the little juke is key to like work your way through the line of scrimmage between the tackles to try and try and get the running game going. Mm-hmm. But so Madden has it, and they had—they definitely had this last year. Where if it's a big, if it's Jamal Lewis, he can't do a little juke. He's—if you hit the right stick with him, he just kind of lowers the shoulder and tries to plow over people. But if it's a no Sean Marino type, he does the subtle little juke move, um, and that seems to me anyway, it's working better than it than it did last year. Maybe it's the Broncos didn't have a, a, the right kind of back to do that move last year. But the little juke, at least in Madden, is back, and that, that's important. Who uh, is doing the announcing? It's uh, Tom Hammond and, and Chris Collinsworth again. And then at halftime, uh, you get uh, Fran Charles and uh, Alex, uh, what's your name, from the NFL Network. And they Alex give, Flanagan? Yeah. And they give, you, uh, they give you highlights of your game. They give you scores from around the league, some league leaders from around the league. Um, so it's fun. The highlights from your game is, is kind of cool. And you get that when the game is over as well. I think out of all the slights I've ever had professionally, the one that wounds me the most is that they've never asked me to do anything in Madden. Where, like, I like, why couldn't I have been Fran Charles? They do a thing even after their game called the extra point, where you can look at um, they kind of give you a synopsis of other games, like two or three other games of the week kind of thing, and then they preview yeah. preview your game coming up. And they can have like a Bill Simmons column in there, like. Yeah, just anything. Just throw me some sort of bone, for God's sakes. Tony Bruno's radio show is on there for like five years. Yes, that's true. How do they? How do they decide this stuff? In a vacuum. Yeah, apparently. Um, they have steerable tackles this year, where you um, use the the joystick to, to. You basically can do the hit stick from any angle, um, which is pretty cool. Um, there's now gang tackles where um, on defense you hit you hit the the joystick and you can pile up like eight or nine guys on, on the on the ball carrier. And on the flip side, as you're running the ball, you can drag guys for further yards. 
And the, one of the nice cool things is on, on pass rushing, um, we, if you're controlling a defensive lineman, you, you move the right stick kind of left and right to shake free of the defensive lineman and to rush the quarterback. It makes it a little bit easier to pressure the quarterback. And if you play with the vibrator on, the vibration mode, <laughs> yeah, I just said that, didn't I? Yeah. Well, then you're really multitasking. Um, <laughs> When you drop back in the pocket to pass, if there's if there's pressure on you, your 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 controller will vibrate, and you'll you'll know it's time to get rid of the ball. I'm not a huge fan of the vibrating controller. I'm not either for a lot I, of that, reasons. That's why I didn't I didn't know that this. I was just looking at the book to see what they added, and I saw that, and I said, "Oh, well, that's probably why I didn't know that they did that because I never play with it on. I don't what? like I don't like the hard pounding thing when you're trying to kick a field goal and whatever. That's a let's swappy. get to the big question in two parts. One. Is Michael Vick available as a free agent? You know, I haven't looked at the free agents. I apologize. I have not gone in to look at the free agents. All right. Well, a bigger question. You Two. probably have to work through Tony Dungy to sign him. Two, would you sign Michael Vick and add him to your 2009 fake Denver Broncos? I might, because so far I'm not enjoying the Kyle Orton experience. You really have? That's shocking. I can't you know, believe it. He runs, you know, you try to throw like an out pattern, and, and last year Cutler would throw it, you know, 80 miles an hour, and this year it's just not getting there quite as fast. And then mm. you get the, there's the great Chris Collinsworth comment where if I'm like seven or eight, eight of nine with, with Orton, you know, basically doing screens and dump offs, Collinsworth says, you know, Kyle Orton's not thought to be an accurate passer, but he's having a good day so far. Uh that's yeah, that's bad. Yeah. When they're when they're recording back, kind of like backhanded compliments yeah. for your video game quarterback, I gotta say, like, there's nothing worse than having a bad video game quarterback. And I've had it all kinds of ways because, you know, we had that stretch. It was the pre Bledsoe stretch that was just abominable. Yep. Followed by the late Bledsoe stretch, which was really no great shakes either. And now Brady. And we've really hit some peaks with Brady over the years with his rating. Now, well, I wonder what his rating was this year. It was probably low 90s. But mobility was probably not as good. Putting in this game this year made me wonder what like fans of really bad teams have been doing for the last 15 years. They, You know what they've been doing? They've been trading for guys on other teams. Because I can tell you that firsthand. Yeah. That's what you do. You try to basically rape the other teams of their best players with ridiculous trades. Yeah, I guess that's, that's probably what people have done because it's really depressing. I remember looking across your offensive line and you got seventy fours and seventy fives and you know, plus with the Broncos defense with the three fours now, like guys who were good last year, um, like Doomerville and, and and Moss, they were like eighties as defensive ends, now they're sixties as linebackers. Ugh. It's crushing. Yeah, I remember the year before the real Pats went to the Super Bowl, we went six and ten and the team was awful. And it was a great Madden year. I think it was, so it was 2001 Madden, and that's when I was really playing it nonstop, and the Pats stunk, and I basically had to make 20 to 25 trades. Like, it would take me a whole day to make the trades to set up what I needed to do for franchise mode, which is when you know your team sucks. Well, you had you had that era where you had Curtis Martin and Ben Watson, and that's all you need in Madden. You mean Ben Coates, yeah. That's right, Ben Coates. If you, if you have a beast of a, of a running back and a tight end, yes. that's all you, you don't, the receivers are unnecessary. Remember that era fondly. The Ben Coates was the Ben Coates was the greatest, and I, I was calling the Ben Coates. The Ben Coates was the greatest video game tight end of all time He's because right. they made him too good. Like no, they'll never make a tight end that disproportionately good ever again. Yeah, the very short list. And that's what is is great. Is it's him? It's it's Shannon Sharp. It's Tony Gonzalez and Cap Bozo. Yeah, that's right, the Cap Bozo. <laughs> you never quite understood why Cap Bozo was so great in Tecmo Bowl. Well, I think we do understand. I think the guy who made Tecmo Bowl was a Bears fan because <laughs> he also made Willie Galt really good. That's true. And he stunk in real life. I, so you would sign Michael Vick. I'm gonna, that's, as soon as I get off this podcast, I'm going to go look into that. See, I think – I mean, he should be in the game. The point of the game is for the game to be fun and for people to enjoy it. Why do I have to create Michael Vick? Well, you could do that, by the way, because they, yeah. have, they have created a player. So maybe I'll just create John Elway, bring him back. Do you? Uh, I don't think you've been on the podcast since the tragic Jay Cutler events. Uh, since his departure or since his, his radio comments? No, since his departure. No, probably not. I don't think you have been. I think yeah. I was meaning to have you on, but you went away, and, and then it wasn't really a relevant yeah. story well, anymore. Before we switch gears, let me quickly yeah. just put out a plea to everybody who plays Madden Online. Yeah. Play like a normal human being. If you're if you're losing fourteen to seven at halftime and you have to kick off, 
Don't disconnect. Don't pull the plug. Don't quit. Just play the game. That's, online play can be fantastic if you get a good player and someone who's just playing the game the right way. But it's, it can be really – I don't want to spend 45 minutes of my time to get a lead in the third quarter and then have you disconnect so you don't have to take the loss. If you're going to play online, be a man or a woman, take your wins or your losses as they come, and move on. Do people do that? Yes. Yeah, and it happens in it happens in the baseball games too. But uh, if you there's a way that like if you turn the machine, you just turn the machine off. That way they don't get a loss registered to them. Or you pretend like your wireless signal went out. Yeah, basically. So so basically, all you have to do is unplug your router and your your router, and you don't get a loss. Yeah, or just turn the machine off. Turn the PS3 off or whatever whatever system you're playing. Well, why can't they why can't they keep track of that? And like the most people who have gotten out of a loss, like once you get over ten, you're not I, allowed to be in the league they, anymore. They, what they do is they they track and they call it disconnects and they track disconnects. So like if you want to go into a into like a, a lobby room to, to pick someone to play with, you can look at their profile. But if you just do play now or it just matches you up with any random person, you can't see that. God, right. can't, can't you have a fake experience with a random stranger anymore? <laughs> For God's sakes. What's this world coming to? It's pretty sad. Awful. All right. All right. So, Jake, Jake Cutler. Cutler. Yeah. So, at the end of the season, last Bronco season, not, yeah. not really an ideal season. Didn't really work yeah. out. Nothing really happy about it. Um, but you still had a good offensive coach, and you had one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. You had a great offense. And a great offense that you, the reason you didn't make the playoffs was not because of your offense. For the most part, although not great in the red zone, but for the, yeah. Yeah. Still, still felt good about the offense. It's a, yeah, it was, it was addressable. Yeah. There were ways to, for it to even get better. Yep. That would not have taken a lot of effort. Right. So within four months, you lose your coach. Yep. And your quarterback, I'm not, still not, we're still not even sure what totally happened, but your quarterback is now in the Bears. And as Mike Lombardi pointed out, you got two number ones and a number two for him. But one of the number ones that Chicago gave up, basically they took Jay Cutler with that pick. Yes. So basically they traded a number one and a number two for the right to take Jay Cutler 17th in a draft that he would have gone first. Any sane person makes that trade. You guys get two number ones and a number two in Kyle Orton. So for the downgrade from Jay Cutler to Kyle Orton, you get two number ones and number two. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not totally happy about that if I'm a Broncos fan. Am I wrong? Well, if you go back again to the end of last season, when Mike Shanahan is my coach and Jay Cutler is my quarterback, and then you look at the changes that they made to the defense this year, bringing in Dawkins, Andre Goodman, um, I think it's Andre Goodman, uh, whatever the cornerback, um, you know, they, they upgraded the defense at least enough this year that with Cutler, you know, they're going to win. 10 to 12 games, I think, although their schedule is horrific. Um, so it's just crushing. But the flip side of that is you don't want the guy who is going to just be a total nut job because someone called to ask if they'd be interested in trading him. Right. I mean, this is professional sports. This happens all the time. At he some seems point, a little thin-skinned. Yeah. I mean, if <laughs> my boss came to me and said, you're my guy. We're never, we're never taking you off your job. And then a month later, someone at some other place is available, and they look at him. Am I going to be mad that now he's changing his tune? Probably, but I'm not going to sell my house and say I'm not coming back to work here anymore. Now I don't, you know, I don't make what Jay Cutler makes. It's a little bit different, but it, it, it seemed like a total overreaction on both parts because that first meeting where they supposedly got together and, and McDaniel's didn't do anything to make it better or, or make him feel better. Oh, it's, it's, it's. How old's the guy? Fifteen? I mean, uh, well, that was part of the know, problem. Is, is you had a twenty-five-year-old and a and a and a thirty-two-year-old, or however old McDaniel's is. Yeah, you know, trying to handle this, and oh, it was just it, it escalated really quickly, really got out of control <laughs> fast. So I've looked at the schedule. Uh, I I have the Broncos four and twelve this year with a ten-game losing streak in the middle of it. Yeah, and, and without going into the gory details, I doubted you, and then you read through the schedule, and it does seem pretty possible. It's yeah. like from, what, game five to game yeah, up until 16. Like, yeah. yeah. They, they open at Cincinnati, which I have as a loss, but winnable. Then they're home against Cleveland. And, you know, in two games against the Raiders, figure split at home with, with the Browns or with the Chiefs. But You don't think there's any sort of Ewing theory potential for your team? 
it's hard to say with what the Brandon Marshall thing is. If he wants to play and be Brandon Marshall and say, you know what, I'm just going to raise my value through the roof. But if he wants to be a, a cancer in the in the locker room, and or doesn't or gets little nagging injuries and keeps him off the field, yeah, they're going nowhere. And even even if he plays great, I don't. It's. I'll say the one good thing that the one good thing out of all of this for you. And for the other Bronco fans. Uh, please tell me, because, you know, when your baseball team is desperately out of it and your football team isn't looking good and you don't follow the NBA anymore, it's a long sports year. <laughs> yeah, it can be. So, Thank God for Madden. Here's the good thing. Jay Cutler made it easy for you guys to come to grips with what happened by being such a such a jerk. Yeah. And by throwing that thing out about how the Chicago fans were so much better than the Denver fans, which was just a terrible move. And, and I don't know. Just... By the way, why he, twist the knife, Jay? And why didn't he say Bears fans are a ten? He said there are nine. Oh, that's true. I didn't he, even think. He's of not that. even smart enough to say his own fans are a ten. Maybe he's just not smart. I mean, maybe that's what this all comes back to. Is like his behavior during this off season has been the behavior of somebody who doesn't seem like he's playing with a full deck. Seems mm-hmm. like a strange, oversensitive, not that smart guy. And now, with that said, I think that trade was phenomenal for Chicago. And they haven't had a good quarterback with a good arm since I can't even remember. Yeah. So, you know, and and their fans are so fired up for them and for him and the upgrade of whatever they've had for years and years versus what they have now, I think, is going to be a good thing for them. I was reading the other day where reasons. someone was suggesting that, you know, he, last year Cutler was kind of the one who, who looked at Eddie Royal in preseason when he was just doing special teams and said, that guy needs to play more on offense. Yeah. You know, and if he can do... For Eddie Royal, what he did for Devin Hester, yeah, you know, then they're going to have something. Yeah, well, he made it easy for you at least. You're you're not going to be lamenting. Oh, I wish I wish we had yeah. Jay Cutler because he he dished you. He said you were a six. Yeah, even a six and a half would have been better. At least you're like in the box. Like he basically called Denver fans a B minus. Yeah, because you know who were number six for the Broncos, Bubby Brister. So he basically called oh. us Bubby Brister. Yeah, it's tough. By the way, is this the first Madden ever where it doesn't just roll off the tongue? Madden 10. Madden 10. Madden 2000, you know. Yeah, you're right, because it was Madden 90 or Madden 0. You're right. Well, so next year will be Madden 11, Madden 12. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, you're right. But my six-year-old Jack wants to please say, Daddy, can I play Madden 010? Because it's just easier to say the O first. Maybe say 210? I don't know. Hmm. Hey, th- well, before I let you go, tell... Tell uh, tell everybody about your thing about how even though baseball is on too late and the kids miss the games, video games has enabled your your sons to connect with uh with Oh baseball. yeah, I by playing by playing the the baseball video games. A my my six year old is a baseball savant at this point. Like yeah, to the point where when we went to Cooperstown this summer and my buddy up there took a Gil Hodges jersey out of the box to show us and he said what's this and jack said that's gil hodges jersey yeah his number, that's pretty good his number 14 was retired at shea now it's on the wall at city field he's like that but playing the game a he learned the rules of baseball because like he didn't know what tagging up was until he kept getting doubled off and i explained it to him and he says so now he knows how to tag up he understands what force outs are he understands bringing in relief pitchers he's learned so much about playing the game just by playing the video game you know so when he goes out on the field and he's playing t-ball with other kids you know yeah. it's, like you, when you play t-ball, you're supposed to hit and run to first base and wait for the next kid. Well, most kids will run and do like the pounce on first base. They're you know they're happy to get there. Jack runs like down the line through the base because he knows <laughs> that's how it's supposed to be done. And then when the next kid's hitting, he starts to take a lead, and the other kids are like, you, well, "You have to be on the base." And he's like, "I'm taking my lead," and he's got his fingers you know dangling you know like Ricky Henderson would do. Right. Um, and he knows all the players in the game. You know, just from he knows. If you say who's on the Minnesota Twins, he'll tell you the names of the guys who play on the Twins or the Cardinals or whoever from from playing the video game. And what about the batting stances? Oh yeah, he's got. We were. This is true. We were at T ball this year, and he likes to play the Red Sox on the video game sometimes and watches them because we get Nesson. Um, and he's standing in the batter's box, and he's got his hands separated on the bat. And the coach says, "Jack, put your hands together." And he says, "I'm doing. I'm doing my Eucalyptus." <laughs> And that's from the video games as much as the real games. Yeah, because yeah. like when you when you do the the road to the show mode where you kind of you make yourself and then you start in the minor leagues and work your way up, you can select batting stances. Yeah. And so like he'll go through all the batting stances as he wants when he likes. And then he, I downloaded songs and I gave some guys uh, walk up songs. So now 
uh, since Michael Jackson died, he's, he, all he wants to do is listen to Michael Jackson songs. So, like, we're in the back playing wiffle ball. We'll do the player introductions, and we'll say, leading off for the Mets, Jose Reyes. Mama say, mama say, mama makusa. Mama say, mama say, mama makusa. <laughs> wow, but poor Michael Jackson's kicking himself right now that he never got to meet Jack. Yeah. What, too soon? Probably. I don't know. I heard a, f- a few of those a little too soon on the Joan Rivers roast last night, too. So. Yeah, there were a couple. <laughs> Apparently, it's never too soon. A couple too soons. The Kanye West mom joke. Wow. That one. and uh, that, I mean, that wasn't... We were nearly ready for that one yet. No. And then what was the one about uh, Kung Fu guy? The one oh, that, the David Carradine. Yeah, yeah. There were some lines crossed yeah. in the Joan Rivers <laughs> roast. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, See, this is what, what when they mentioned about how video games have ruined little kids and sports and all that stuff. Like, it, it's only ruined it if you only allow your kids to play video games. In my opinion, video games are actually a really good thing for little kids as long as they're also playing sports. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, we're we're in the backyard playing wiffle ball, and half the stuff that Jack says he knows from playing the video games. So we still go out and play. He, if he hits a home run and runs around the bases, the first thing he'll say is the same thing Matt Vescurgeon says in the game. That's the inside the park home run. That's all about hustle. Yeah. That's where he gets it from. And that's that's great. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And you think, like, when we were growing up, playing in television football, we're putting in codes. <laughs> 9816. Right. Seven, you know, five, now, five. How much more sophisticated it is. I wonder if, like, potential, you know, like, the, there's some six-year-old right now who's going to be the next Bill Walsh because he's been playing Madden. Like, in his formative years, he's learned how to attack a defense. Right, he's doing create a play and... All that stuff. You're not down with that theory? I think I think there probably are. That could be really interesting. That surprised me in the least. Madden oh. shaping a whole new generation of offensive coordinators. It is thanks to Madden, and it is the one video game out of any video game anybody's ever played where you really do feel like it takes you to a higher level of understanding. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be watching football, or I'll, I'll talk to you after. I'll be like, do you see the highlights? They ran the Ben Coates Madden 97 play. You know, they send the guy right down the... Like, we know all the different plays and the formations yeah, from Madden. I, mean, I never played football after ninth grade, but and yeah. I, so up until about, you know, six years ago, I didn't know what a cover two was and how it works, but you start learn, doing it in the foot in the game, and if you go into practice mode and do that, you see what, where the players go and what they do. And you never knew how dumb, how dumb it was to go into the prevent when the other team <laughs> can pick you apart with two and a half minutes left and exactly. slowly march down the field. Yeah, exactly. All right, Gus. Thanks for having me, Joe. Yeah. Uh, let us know how that franchise thing is going. And then the next BS report, after you find out the answer of whether Michael Vick is a free agent or not, um, yeah. I will pass that along to the and, listeners because I know they're on pins and needles. You need to get online. So, I do. So we can at least play one time online. Since about four years ago, you wrote a whole thing about how this was going to change our lives. I know, but there was a lot of glitches with the online the first couple yeah. of years. Now yeah. it seems like the glitches have been solved. Now it's fantastic. You know what else I look for if we start playing online? The first argument where somebody gets disconnected and we claim that it was intentional. Well, that's the beauty of, of the headset. If you, yeah. if you buy the headset, like I, when Steve Berthiam and I play online baseball, that used to be like a problem. Like, oh, you, all you did was throw pitches outside. You didn't throw anything over the plate. Now you can actually go, sorry, man, I didn't mean, you know, I screwed that one up and I bounced one in the dirt. And you, So it, it alleviates a lot of angst. Wait, can you explain the headset, please? It's a, you just like get like a Bluetooth headset and you and I can talk while we play against each other online, like we're on the phone. Really? Yeah. How did I not know that? Yeah, well, you have kids, and you somehow let that get in the way of your video games. But you have kids, too. Well, I haven't let that get in the way of my video games. <laughs> I, just, I just incorporate that into my kids. So life. you hook up the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth headset. You can hook up to your, the PlayStation or whatever? Yeah. So I just, it's a, just like you would on your phone. It's just sitting there hooked around my ear. and Yeah, it's great. I can tell you one thing. You if my wife if my wife walked in on me with a Bluetooth headset <laughs> on at twelve thirty in the morning playing video games against you, that might be it. Yeah, except that would be three thirty in the morning here. My wife would probably be a little matter. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a contest. Yeah. I, I almost feel like she'd rather walk on walk in on me watching a porn. It's fifty fifty, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to ask her. I'll get that answer for you. All right. You. And if uh, if anybody out there is working on those Lego baseball stadiums, have them email you just to get an update on the progress there. Hey, you don't want to throw out a challenge to America? You don't want to give away your username? Oh, no, I'm, I'm glad to. I am the Hammer 28 after after John Milner, former Met grade. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, right now there's about like 15 people who have the game, and uh, as we do with, what's today, Monday, how we yeah. tape this. So I'm online last night playing. There's like 
seven or eight other people out there who are already have it and, and are online playing. So, yeah, if anybody wants to play the hammer, I'm out there. But you got to take your lumps, or you're, if you're beating the heck out of me, I'm not going to pull the plug or disconnect. The Hammer 28. Yeah. Come, Throwing it out. Come get Kyle Orton, baby. <laughs> By the way, when you play the Hammer 28 in about two weeks, Jay Cutler will be the quarterback of that team. <laughs> or, or Mike Vick. You'll be or Michael you'll be, Vick. You'll be running the Wildcat. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be forgiving him really fast. Yeah. All right, Gus, thank you. Thank Talk you, to you soon. All right. Yeah. One last thing forgot to mention that Gus was on the Subway Fresh Tech Hotline. Can't forget them. And also... uh I don't want anybody to think that I was ducking Jack O today, our Yankee fan that we call for better and worse during the baseball season. He wasn't available today. We called him. Joe Mead, you're there, right? I'm Joe here. Me- did we call Jack O or did we not call Jack O? We called Jack O. Did he not respond to repeated emails today? I'm worried he may have been out partying too late. You think he's so happy about the sweep? Yeah. Uh, I, You know, part of me is glad that he wasn't there, and then the other part of me is really glad that he wasn't there. <laughs> but either way, either way, he wasn't there, and we did call him. I called him like a man. I called him like Mike Gundy. I'm a man. I'm 40, and uh, and he wasn't there. So what can I tell you? Um, we'll try to call him later in the week, though. But thank God he wasn't there today. Until then, on the BS Report, Bill Simmons signing off. <laughs> Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. This concludes another installment of the BS Report. And with all the talk about sports, Bill Simmons neglected to mention this important just breaking news, which frankly cannot go unstated. This summer, Subway is teaming up with Live Nation to bring you great food and great music for a great value. Right now, buy a Subway $5 footlong and get a Live Nation concert ticket for just $5 to some of the hottest Live Nation shows like Nickelback, The Fray, and Crew Fest 2. Ticket price does not include fees. See the nearest Subway for details.